In this project, we're going to build the base of our do-nothing machine. Looking at my drawing, I can see that it's a block of wood, 150 millimeters by 150 millimeters, and 35 millimeters thick. I'm going to start a new document to put all of the parts for this project in. If you're not on your documents page, click on the on shape icon in the upper left corner, and then click on the create button and create a document. We're going to call this our do nothing machine and say OK. And we've started a new document and we have a part studio open. Now before I start, I'm going to go up and next to the on shape icon, I have my document menu. I'm going to click on that, choose workplace units, and I'm going to check to make sure that I'm working in millimeters. So my default is in inches, so I'm going to change for this document and all of the part studios in it, we will change this to millimeters. And I'll use the green checkbox to say OK. I will start a new sketch by clicking on the sketch button in the toolbar and choose the top sketch plane. With this plane chosen, I'm going to view normal, right click and view normal to sketch plane. To make our square, we're actually going to use a center point rectangle. And when I come down, I'm going to click on the origin of the sketch plane to be the center of this rectangle. I click once and I can add the dimensions. This is going to be 150 millimeters, so I can add that from the keyboard and hit return. And then 150 millimeters and hit return again. To end the rectangle command, I right click and escape. If you need to edit any of these, you double click and you can change the dimensions. If I need to add dimensions, I can use my dimension tool. I can see that the lines are black, so this, this is fully constrained and I can accept this sketch. Right click the mouse, change to isometric view, and I can see this drawing sitting on my top sketch plane. I'm going to use the extrude tool from my feature menu and we're creating a new part. I'm going to click on that region or that sketch that we just created. Now we want half of the thickness to be below the sketch plane that we just used. So we're going to say symmetric and you notice that it drops so it's equally divided on that sketch plane for a depth of 35 millimeters to create this initial block. I'm going to click the green check mark to accept this and notice that down here on our feature list we have part one has been created. Next we're going to remove material to create these two dovetailed or angled grooves that go through the center of our block. I can see that these grooves are 17.5 millimeters deep, that they are 25 millimeters wide and have a side angle of 76 degrees. To sketch the groove, I'm going to activate a new sketch and click on this edge of my block. Use the right-click menu to view normal to sketch plane. And I can see this is the center line that we used and this is the origin. We're going to start a line to make our sketch. Now I'm not going to draw down here. I'm going to draw up here a rough shape like I want the groove to look like. Right click and hit escape line. I'll use my dimension tool. We know that the bottom dimension is going to be 25. You know that this angle, I'll click on these two lines to create this angle at 76 degrees. And it looks a little out of shape so I will use an equal constraint to say that this already dimensioned side is going to be equal to this side. So now we've made them both the same. And to place this, I want to place this line right down here at the origin. I'm going to click on a point here. And as I come along this line, you notice I get a little square box lights up. That's a midpoint. And I've just placed a po point on that midpoint. So I can use my coincident and say that I want this center point to be coincident with the origin. 
And when I do that, you notice that all the lines turn black. I'm going to escape my create coincident. Notice that this line is still blue. So if I grab hold of that, what does that do? Oh, it means it still moves. So it's not fully constrained. I'm going to use my coincident constraint again. Click on this top blue line and click on the top line of the block. And now we've locked that down and we've created a sketch for our groove. Now, anytime you're drawing this and it isn't working out right, you can just go up here and click the red X and that will cancel this sketch and erase everything you've done so you can start again. Or sometimes you just need to use the undo button to undo so that you can take away the last action. We're going to click the green box to accept this. I'm going to right click and choose isometric to view it in this angle and use my extrude tool again. We'll click on this profile that we just made. And in this case, I'm going to be removing material. So I'll click there. It wants to know how far. We're going to use the drop down menu and say through all. And I can see that happening. We know this is coming out of part one. So I'll accept that. And we've created the first groove. Next, I have to create a sketch for the other groove. Start a sketch, click on this face of my block. I'm going to right click to view normal to the sketch plane. And rather than draw it again, I can look over here in my feature list and find sketch two. That's the sketch we used last time. I'm going to copy this sketch, go into my work area here and right click the mouse, paste the sketch entities. The little mouse icon shows that I have to click the green button to accept it. So I'm going to reuse this sketch. I will say coincident. I want the midpoint of this line coincident with the origin on the block. And I notice that this, like last time, that top line can move around. So I'm going to make this top line coincident with the top of the block. Right click and escape. These are still blue, but I'll give them a little pull test and I pull on them, they aren't going to move. So I'll accept this sketch, right click and go to isometric again. Use my extrude tool and choose that profile. Again, we want to remove material through all and we'll accept that. So now we've created our two dovetail grooves through the block. Last, we're going to round off the corners on this outside edge using a fillet tool. So from my feature menu, I'm going to choose fillet. It has a radius of five millimeters. And now I can come down and click on, and here I accidentally got all of that area. So I'm going to undo that. Start again. I just want this outside edge to be filleted. So I have to choose each individual edge. If I were to pick this whole thing, it'll f it, with tangent propagation turned on, fillets the whole thing. So I've rounded over those outside edges. I'll accept that. And my part is done. I can use P on the keyboard to turn off the plane so I don't have to look at them. Now lastly, looking down here at the bottom of the page, I see that we're working in this part studio and it has a tab on the bottom edge. If I hover over the part studio, it shows me what's in it. I'm going to right click and choose rename and we'll call this the base. We're going to be creating each of the parts for this assembly in their own part studio inside this document. So this allows us to quickly see which part we're dealing with.